Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 13, 10, and eight. If you're new here, welcome. I make a lot of videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more sensualist lifestyle. So if any of those things interest you, be sure to hit that subscription box down below the video. And if you wanna stay abreast of my new videos, hit that notification bell as well. So in today's video, I thought I would discuss a topic that I have not addressed in seven years, and that is what actually led us to homeschooling. So I have made a video on this previously and you're welcome to check it out, but I thought I would just reframe it again now from the perspective of someone who's been doing it for seven years. Initially, I had never thought about homeschooling. We never grew up in homeschooling. Uh, my husband and I knew a few children who were homeschooled when we were younger, but honestly, they seemed kind of strange. And we had all the same biases against homeschooling that I think the average you know, parent in the school system has. My son had difficulty in kindergarten, and that's when we really started to float this idea because he had been a professional preschooler. He had gone to preschool at Montessori school when he was three, four, or five, and then when he was six, he entered kindergarten in a public school system. And I saw my child sort of change before my eyes. Um, he was a very early reader, so a lot of what he learned in kindergarten was a little bit boring to him. He was one of those kids that just sort of knew how to read when he was four. I didn't really do formal instruction with him. He watched like Letter Factory and things like that on TV, but other than that, you know, I didn't really instruct him in phonics or anything. He just knew how to read. So when he got to kindergarten, a lot of the exercises were, you know, name something from the alphabet around the room and things like that. And he just stopped doing those assignments. He uh, would come home a lot of times with disciplinary notes. So in kindergarten there, they had red notes, yellow notes, and green notes. And if you had a green note, you did great for the day. Yellow, you were on, you know, caution, like you had to work on some things. And red was you had misbehaved that day or, or done something truly wrong. And he just started coming home with more and more red notes. And obviously, you know, I contacted his teacher to see what was going on. I'm pretty easygoing with my children, especially when they were younger. So for me, I, I thought, you know, he just has to learn how to be in a official school environment. It's not Montessori. He can't really wander around, do, you know, select his own work for the day, etc. So he just needs to learn how to, how to toe the line, you know. And after talking to his teacher, I realized that he just wasn't sitting on the line ever, literally. He couldn't sit still. He could not follow instructions without interrupting her. He couldn't stop talking um, to his neighbors. And she described him as the most cheerfully disobedient student she had ever had. And he had been moved from table to table of quieter and quieter children. And she told me that that wasn't working because he made all the quiet children talk and now she had bigger problems than ever. And, you know, honestly, I thought that was kind of a good thing because when you have somebody who like makes you feel included and comfortable enough to talk, especially in a kindergarten environment, I think that's a good thing. Um, he had so many exuberant characteristics even then. You know, he was the loudest kid in the room. He would make all the friends everywhere that he went, you know, like he would make friends in the playground. He would lead games and make believe. And I never had to worry about where he was ever because you could hear him from across the room. None of that seemed to be translating well in a public school classroom environment. And I could see him start to sort of turtle in on himself as the weeks went on, where it is a strain on a little kid, right, to keep coming home with a note that graphically represents that you were bad that day. And no matter what I told him about, you know, this is just a reflection of rule following and it's not about you, etc., I could still see it weigh him down a little bit and make him question who he was as a person and that hurt me as a mother because you never want to see that light go out of your kid's eyes. I mean, my eldest was so curious and so enthusiastic about learning and about school and about people and talking and he brought all of that with him and he was being told every day that that characteristic, like those qualities that made him him, you know, that made him extraordinary and immemorable all his life were frowned upon, were the wrong type of behavior. And so 
when I decided to have him evaluated for ADHD, it was with the idea of what would the accommodations be if he had this diagnosis. I had him evaluated outside of the school environment with a professional. It took two days. It was like six hours long. And he came through that testing with a combined type ADHD diagnosis, like across the board. He could have been like a textbook case. And it just sort of confirmed a lot of the things we had been observing anyway. And so I thought, what are the accommodations that they could make in the classroom environment? We still hadn't gotten to the point of thinking about homeschooling, really. The accommodations they suggested were putting him in a table by himself, letting him do half the work for full credit, um, having privacy shields on his desk so that he wouldn't be distracted by the other students. And all of those things, while understandable, seem to be things that would make my kid feel different in a negative way and limited and labeled in a negative way. I am grateful that I received the diagnosis for him at a young age and we told him, you know, that he has a race car brain, that his brain is working differently, etc. Because it led me to be able to find ways of talking to him and helping him learn in a way that maximized his potential, that let him really like grow into who he was meant to be and and be his authentic self, you know, to bring that back to like the learning environment. I realized really quickly though that even with that knowledge, he wasn't really able to fit himself into the box that was required for public school education. I have great respect for public school teachers, for teachers in general. I used to teach myself and I realize that it's a very hard thing to accommodate different types of learning and different types of attention in various students in a big class, you know, of 20 plus students. So I get that. But for my child, I wanted him to have the best possible experience. And I think for every one of us at homeschools, there is this moment that separates the time when we're just thinking about homeschooling and the time where we really decide to do it. And it is that straw that breaks the camel's back. And for me, that straw came when he was walking to the car one day and he you know, pointed out something that one of his friends was carrying. He was like, oh, that thing is so cool. And I said, oh, like, where'd they get it? You know, and I noticed a bunch of the children had this same type of, um, you know, toy in their hands. And he said, oh, that's treasure box. You know, they get, they get that treasure box gift. And I had never heard of treasure box before. So I asked him like, what is treasure box? And he said, oh, you know, if you're good all week, then you get treasure box. You have to get five checks. So Monday through Friday. And then if you get them, you'll get it. And he looked at me and he was like, matter of fact is anything. I'm, I'm never going to get that. Like I'll never get treasure box. And he seemed totally resigned to it in the way like an old person would be. And I think it upset me so much more than it upset him because I... <laughs> I was so sad to see a little kid say to me that they would never be able to do something and to have that so deeply, you know, felt by him that he just said it matter of factly that he would never be able to get treasure box. And I knew in that moment that I was not up for sending him to another year of school when that school made him feel less than others, you know, less than um, enough, simply because of who he was as a person. You know, I was not going to subject my child to an environment where the authority figures made him feel less than, made him feel not good enough, simply because of who he was as a person, simply because of his personality and his exuberance and his enthusiasm and his friendliness and I just couldn't do it anymore. Like that moment for me was the defining moment. I knew I was going to homeschool him the next year at least. I firmly believe, you know, that we are all on a spectrum of personality. Like we all have a different way of interpreting what happens to us in the world and also outputting, you know, acting out in the world. And when we have differences like ADHD, I think there is space and room to accommodate for those differences, especially when they're children and learning how to move in our world in a way that doesn't make them feel small, but instead allows them to really ripen into their gifts as opposed to just sort of turtling into their weaknesses. So I'm so glad that we have been able to homeschool him all this time so that he could feel strong and 
stronger yet as we worked with him, as we worked with his challenges that come from ADHD and taught him how to make the most of his abilities as well. You know, he can hyper focus on projects and do amazing jobs at like creative things, at building projects, at engineering things. He also has some difficulty with time blindness and things like that, but homeschooling has allowed us to really like hone in on those weaknesses and strengths and and build him up and scaffold him as he grows into himself. I am so grateful that we had this opportunity to do that. I'll close with a little story that really cinches what made us tip over into homeschooling like as a definite. One day my kids and I were in the yard uh, while he was in kindergarten and I always encourage them to make wishes. You know, I'm one of those people, I'm like, wish at 1111, wish when your necklace clasp hits the pendant, wish when we go over railroad tracks, etc. And we were picking dandelions and, you know, I was about to tell them to make a wish and he said, oh no, we can't make wishes. And I was like, what? And he said his teacher told him that making wishes on dandelions was really like spreading weeds, you know, and that you shouldn't be spreading weeds. You should just leave them where they are. I had so many feelings in that moment. I mean, honestly, the biggest one was just of like surging anger. But I told him, you know, like, we make wishes in this family. Like wishes are an important part of who we are. You know, it's a moment to like seize joy and to create joy, right? In the ordinary moments of life. You don't have to wait for something special to make a wish. You don't have to wait for your birthday once a year. You know, like wish, put that little bit of positive energy into the world. You know, have that childlike joy and that childlike belief that something great could happen. And I thought to myself, you know, I cannot bear that someone else is stripping my child of joy and not just any joy, but like something that's so fundamental to us as parents and me as a mother, you know, this is like a special thing for us, like all of this wishing and it just, I mean, I couldn't imagine why somebody would take that away from a child, but I also knew that it was my responsibility to make sure that they didn't. After the dandelion incident, I think we filed the papers with the school board that week that we would be taking him out of school and homeschooling him the following year. And of course, this is seven years later now. And I have been so blessed by this homeschooling journey, honestly. There have been really hard days. I do not sugarcoat those days if you follow me on Instagram. But I have been privileged to know my children, to really know them in a way that only comes from this amount of time. I had the experience of working full time and sending my children to school and seeing them for three hours or so at the end of a work day. And the sheer amount of time I spend with them now can be a bit overwhelming, I'll be honest, but it also allows me to see them in their best moments, in their worst moments. Um, it allows them to see me and know me also. I think our ability to support one another in an honest way and not a superficial way is so enhanced from homeschooling. Um, I truly get to tailor their education to where they are, not only academically, but emotionally. I get to tailor their activities to what they're interested in at the moment. If they are tired, they get to take a day off. If they are you know, exhausted, they get to rest if they want to go to the restroom or play a game or move around. They have the opportunity to get up and do that and it's nothing extraordinary. It's just a human being like doing what they need to do to get through the day. Another great thing that happened, especially at the beginning, was that I didn't have to continuously hurry my children. I was super annoyed when I was working every single morning because Getting small children ready in the morning before you have to go to work, if you've ever done it, is like one of the most stressful experiences because nobody's doing what they're supposed to be doing ever. And when you leave them for one moment to address another child or to maybe like, you know, put away breakfast dishes or something, someone else has started to play Legos naked on the floor. I mean, there is never like a straight line to like getting out the door, as you well know. But once we started homeschooling, all of a sudden, I let children sleep in. I woke them up by singing. I you know, hugged them for 10 seconds in the morning. I had the time to be the type of mother that I actually wanted to be and knew that I was. And that was also another gift of homeschooling that is extended till today. 
as they enter their teen years and preteen years, I get to see them so much that they have no choice but to interact with me. You know, this whole idea of a teenager shutting their parents out and leaving them out of their their emotional, you know, maelstrom as they grow in their teen years, that just doesn't happen here because they have big feelings and I'm here to see it play out with their siblings and with me. And we get to have that, you know, repair and recovery phase in a relationship over and over and over again, which just cements our bond over and over and over again. So homeschooling for me has been a journey and I've definitely had bad days, but the good things that have come from it so far outweigh any of those things that I wouldn't trade it for the world. If you are new to your homeschooling journey or if you're seven years in like me or if you're a veteran, um, I would love to know how homeschooling, you know, began for you guys and how it has been going. So please leave those comments down below and I will try to respond to them if I can, because I think it really helps for all of us to feel in community with each other. Thank you so much for listening, you guys. I really do appreciate your time and I wish you the very best day.